everybody, my name's Ed. Okay, gonna have another comic book haul here. Um, I'll show you, <coughs> excuse me, I'll talk about some of the comic books I bought last week, and then I'll show you the ones I picked up uh, today. So, we'll just jump into it. So, Dead Rabbit number one by Gary Dugan, or Jerry Dugan, John McCrea, and Mike Spicer. Um, pretty interesting comic, kind of a crime story, vigilante type thing. The main character is this guy who, yeah, like years ago, back in the maybe early mid 90s, he was this uh, guy who would, uh, I guess, murder and rob like mob bosses and criminals and stuff like that. And then he disappeared for a while. And nobody's seen him since. And we pick up with him, and it's years later. He's a middle-aged guy, and he's uh, taking care of his wife, who uh, who's disabled. And he's just working like a regular nine to five job at uh, at some place that looks like it's like a Walmart or something like that. But then something happens to kind of get him back in action. Um, I thought it was okay. It was really interesting. Or yeah, it was interesting. It's an interesting setup. Um, without giving too much away, it looks like he's, now that he's come back in action, he may have attracted the wrong type of attention. So it'll be interesting to see how this story goes. I don't know if it's going to be an ongoing or if it's just going to be a miniseries, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it's interesting enough. Umbrella Academy by, uh, Gerald Way and Gabriel Ba. And this is Hotel Oblivion. I guess uh, Umbrella Academy has been optioned for a TV series, so that's probably why we're getting this new uh, this new story. Um, it seems like it's picking up where the last miniseries left off. Uh, the team is more or less got back together, sort of, kinda. And they're figuring out what their next move is going to be. Meanwhile, this there's this stuff with uh, number five. That's this that's this character here. He's stuck as a little kid because he was doing uh, all this sort of time travel. So while the other characters are adults, he's still a little kid, and it looks like he's become sort of sort of crazy hitman or whatever. But uh, but yeah, the other characters are just kind of. Uh, Kind of getting themselves together to deal with this new threat that we're not a hundred percent certain uh, what it is. So this is basically just sort of set up. This issue is basically set up and catching us up with uh, with the characters. So we'll see how that where this goes. Unexpected, uh, shiny cover. I don't know if you can make this all out. Oh, I don't know. That doesn't look so hot. Let's see here. Is this a little bit better? Oh no, it's worse. Well, if you see it live, it's a, it's a nice cover. It's by uh, Kevin Nolan. Um, the inside, I'm going to give this one more issue and then I'm probably going to drop it. It's not a bad co uh, comic. It's just not great. It's just, it's just kind of okay-ish. Uh, this issue, they team up with Hawkman and there's all this stuff here that ties into uh, whatever it was, black metal or dark metal or whatever that whatever the last big DC event was, and this stuff about you know alternate realities bleeding over into each other and and this and that and and the nth metal and the nth metal makes people go crazy and like I said, it's not a bad comic book. It's just it's all right. I mean, it's not boring. You've got all this kind of crazy shit happening, you know, monsters and dinosaurs and alternative worlds and blind, um, <laughs> blind, blind magicians and whatnot. Um, 
it's all right. It's all right. But like I said, I'm going to give it one more issue. Then I'm probably going to, uh, then I'm probably going to drop it. Uh, dreamy number two. Haven't read it yet. Um, I just, I just haven't gotten to it. It's just because, uh, this is one of those conflicts where, at least for me, I have to read it. Then I got to read it again just to, uh, you know, drink in every little crazy thing that's happening and, uh, you know, then decide what I think about it. So, Justice League number nine, um, I don't know, just okay. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It's, it's all this stuff where we're kind of, uh, it feels like one of these kind of in-between-ish issues that you would get in like the Avengers and the Fantastic Four and the Titans and stuff like that were tons. It doesn't seem to be uh, going on. They're kind of wrapping up whatever happened on the last adventure. We're getting caught up with the characters kind of doing, doing, um, kind of winding down or whatever. But at the same time, we're setting up for the next adventure. So, uh, so that's all that's happening here. I do like the art by, uh, who's the artist here? Is it, uh, it's, uh, Jorge Jimenez. So I do like his art. I like the kind of, it's really stylized and, and I don't know weird angles and stuff but it's appealing the coloring actually uh kind of helps things stand out as well so we got that juke joint number one uh kind of similar to superficially i'll say it's similar to uh house of whispers over at dc where um you know there's the whole voodoo aspect and you know the main character is this uh you know, kind of big bone black lady. Uh, this was a little bit different. I think it's a little bit darker, a little bit harsher. I was watching um, Ghost Critic's uh, video, and he talks about how there's a, uh, a trigger warning on the front page. Um, it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I mean, like he says, a lot of these image comics are for mature readers anyway, so... But... What's interesting when you think about it, the trigger warning has less to do with the nudity and violence and more to do with the domestic abuse um, uh, subplot. But if you read the back matter, the writer is in fact a survivor of domestic abuse so i guess that's why she put that there so you know and, and really it's it's her comic you know she's got a right to do it yeah if she wants to she's got a right to not do it if she doesn't want to so i don't know but yeah this is uh it's okay interesting setup um yeah just just pretty much a dark supernatural horror type thing um I think I think if I was going to compare it to like House of Whispers, this seems to be like the darker of the two. So, okay. Uh, Paper Girls number twenty-five. Uh, Brian Vaughn and Cliff Chang. Uh, still a good, still a good comic. I'm really enjoying it. But I do get the feeling maybe they are about to start winding down. Or they should start winding down. I don't think this is the type of comic that could uh, that could really go. Well, maybe it could. I was gonna say, oh, plot point. Don't want to get that away. Um, I don't think this is something that could go on for like a hundred issues. I don't know if it could go on for maybe it could go on for fifty. But if it ends like if the if the, if the next arc is the ending. I think that will be a good place to like kind of uh, to to kind of let it go. You know what I mean? So, all right, okay. 
magic order number four. Um, just a fun-ish comic. Uh, Oliver uh, Copiel does a lot of the heavy lifting, and really, to me, that's what makes uh, that really makes the comic work. I just really dig this art. Basically, it's a story about this order of uh, magicians and sorcerers and sorceresses and the and it's this family that's kind of been you know kind of protecting the world and whatnot from evil forces or whatever uh, one of the members has kind of uh, gone rogue or been cast out or whatever and now there's some the end is coming and all that sort of thing and the other family members have to kind of band together. They have to come out of their whatever lives they were living before and figure out how they're going to uh, stop things. But uh, but yeah, this art is just really really amazing. Uh, Oliver Copiel, he's somebody you know. He's got his fans and stuff, but. He's somebody who deserves a lot of credit, I think. Okay, and then now I'll just show you uh, the comics that I got this week or got today. So, Hey Kids Comics, uh, issue three. It's basically Howard Chaikin's dark look uh, at the comic book industry of the past and present as well. Uh, Catwoman number four. I'm probably going to give this, I'm definitely going to read it to the end of this arc. I may or may not, I think I'll probably give it two issues into the next arc, decide if I want to keep uh, reading it. I like a lot of little elements, uh, a lot of little elements they have in the story. I like how they've tried to uh, build up a small supporting cast for a Catwoman. I like the thing with the bad guys, with the corrupt cop and the um or not the corrupt cop the uh, corrupt businessman or politician and his elderly wife and and the uh, catwoman doppelgangers and, and all that crazy stuff but um but it's not as compelling as i as i want it to be it's like i like things about it but as a whole it's like i read it and i like it and then i forget about it so but uh, but I still want to give it a chance. Um, all right, put this over here. Oh, I probably should have shown some of the art from uh, from Howard Shaken. And it's not uh, it's not bad stuff. It's not bad at all. It's actually pretty pretty decent here. But uh, okay, all right. Next thing, Evie Schwab, Shades of Magic, um, the Steel Prince. I don't know anything about this comic other than I think it's a spinoff of Rivers or London, and this cover just sort of caught my eye, and I think this is one of three covers it has something to do with magic it has something to do with stuff <laughs> I don't know I just flipped through it and I thought well I'll give it a shot so like I said I don't know anything about it other than that but okay all right uh, House of Whispers, number two. I think I kind of talked about it when I was talking about uh, Juke Joint. More Voodoo. Uh, like I said, of the two, this one seems to be the more lighthearted comic. So... All right. 
Then I got Hawkman number five. Ooh, another shiny cover. Shiny, shiny. So this one, it looks like it's the reunion of Hawkman and Ray Palmer. Ray Palmer, Adam. I want to say they had like a split comic back in the 60s at one point, possibly. I think they did. I think they did. I'm not 100% certain. And I'm, I'm not sure how long it lasted either way. But okay. And it was also kind of uh, established at that point, I guess. And I guess in the 70s, Justice League comics, that they were kind of, you know, they were the buddies. They were the best friends. They were best friends with each other in that comic. So, okay, all right, and that's pretty much it. Oh, the other thing they gave me this is a freebie. This is DC Essential Graphic Novels, and this is the 2018 version. So, so there, that's that. Okay, all right, so that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. You guys have a great day.